body bags were whole lies. Hello and welcome to Body Bags. My name is James and I'm, uh, I am your Sunday night reviewer. And this evening I wanted to bring you the Paul Verhoeven uh, early classic, Flesh and Blood. So Paul has brought us such movies as Robocop, Total Recall, Showgirls. And this was one of his earlier, early, early adventures. Um, the set in the 1600s, uh, 16th century, sorry, yeah. Um, yeah, so we follow Rutger Hauer uh, and a band of mercenaries. Uh, they've been hired by this um, emperor. Well, th th this kind of, what would you call him? This king, let, let's say, uh, he's been away and he's come back and his castle has been basically taken over and he wants to get it back. Uh, so he has his soldiers and he, he hires this kind of band of kind of like, uh, not the nicest people, these mercenaries are all about raping, pillaging and stuff like that, but they get the job done, these guys. So he promised them 24 hours of take whatever you want from the people inside and get me my castle back. Uh, so this happens and the king kind of has some second thoughts. He's like, mm, mm, not so keen on this lot actually running havoc on the inside of what's now back to my castle. So his commander um, is kind of, he actually, uh, his commander, uh, basically, oh, I sliced the head off a nun. He kind of attacked her quite badly. He didn't mean to. It's an accident, but she's kind of like pff, fitting and like almost dead. And he's like, uh, oh, uh, like we well, we we need to save her, sort of thing. So um, yeah, he's doing that. And and like the the king was like, I'll give you anything you want to help her, but you got to help me you got to get this lot out because obviously the, the kind of the main soldier, the commander, he's like, Hey, we can't do that. He's like, you promised these people, they did the job for you. But anyway, his allegiances turn quickly to the half dead nun. So whoosh, he, he, he uh, banishes them. He, he gets them all out. So there's a group of them that kind of band together. Uh, Rutger Hauer, his character is Martin, and uh, basically it's it's a mixture of like some soldiers and some women, and one of the women is pregnant with his child, and she unfortunately miscarriages, and so they they lose their baby. He loses his baby, and uh, so there's a lot of resentment, obviously towards towards this king and this commander, but when they're burying the baby, um that they find this statue of St. Martin and the, uh, the, basically they have this traveling priest that's with them and he's like, he sees that the actual Martin, Rutger Hauer, it's a sign from God that they should follow him. So that's what they do. Um, the kind of, the movie rolls on a bit and we see like, uh, what's it, Stephen, who's the king's son, um, He's kind of betrothed to this woman, Agnes, um, Jennifer Jason Lee in an early part. Actually, she's in the mid, yeah, she's in the mid twenties in this. Yeah, she's not, she looks very young in this, but um, yeah. Well, anyway, they're like, they're they're going to be together, and she basically sets off. She she's going somewhere. And um, so she has this small band, this caravan that she's in and stuff. And he gets attacked and everyone's killed uh, by Martin and his and his group. And she's hidden in this caravan. And it, they, they all loot it and take it with them. Um, and they're celebrating and things like that. Uh, stripping the caravan. And they find her. And basically they, quite graphically, uh, it's like a stripper and like it's a raper. Uh, but Martin decides he's going to go first. So our hero ends up raping her 
and yeah she she's quite an odd character and it's kind of yeah it's a little, little uneasy to watch like how some of this is filmed because it's like very how would i put this it's very like film world obviously i mean it's set in the 16th century but it's not that she starts to enjoy it but she takes control over the rape and starts to make him look a bit of a fool during it uh the soldiers are laughing at him she's not that upset with it all and it's like um she takes the power kind of during the event uh but he falls for her in a way and so he he stops the others raping her basically and she becomes part of the group slowly they start to accept her and um she, she kind of becomes his woman like they, they attack this other castle at one point it seems to be like full of like uh women and there's like this woman and child sort of thing could they uh, um, we find out that they actually have the plague. Uh, this child was carrying the plague, and so they've taken this castle, uh, not knowing that there's the plague around. And well, they they hold up in the castle. It's it's like it's like Stephen's like this can be our home now, because everything that's been going on is going to be. They're all following him, who's following this um, statue of St. Stephen. He's kind of manipulating some of the movements, maybe, and to decide where it's all going. And it's like, it's spoken, we stay here, because he wants to stay there. Uh, and obviously the priest is like, yes, we follow Stephen. He, he's our he's our lord now, kind of. So, yeah, they hold up in this kind of, in this small castle area. Um, so we have uh, Martin. He's the original king's like son, so he's trying to track Agnes down and kind of like find where she is. He's kind of he's very placid and calm before and open to everyone, but he's kind of taken on the role of his father. He was kind of wounded more almost mortally at one point, so he thought he was going to die. So he's this kind of much more angry, rugged, going to take what he wants sort of thing. So he lays siege to the castle to take Agnes back. Uh, Jennifer Jason Lee. Um, he comes up with this clever construction uh, to, to get inside. Um, Martin has his own ideas. So from the start of the film, um, Stephen tried to use um, some uh, basically just like dynamite sort of things, like gunpowder, make a make a bomb to get into to, to their castle. Uh, it doesn't quite work. It goes wrong. But Martin like uses it and it works very, very well. So he kind of Kills most of the soldiers. Uh, Stephen actually managed to get inside, but he's very injured. They don't know it's in there. And um, yeah, yeah, it's uh, just before they went to attack the castle. So Stephen got the help of the basically the commander who um, who led the, who led the the soldiers before for his father, who is now like, holed up in this little house with this nun and he basically threatens it like you want to be with your nun I'm gonna take her and I'm gonna not be nice to her unless you come and help me because she's having fits and stuff like that she's really fucked up from this head wound and all he wants to do is kind of look after her so he goes and helps but um yeah they, they come across the child when they're going to the castle and he becomes sick and they're like he has the plague but he's learned uh like Stephen actually told him of these ways so that they're, they're like Basically, all the boils and things like that, they had to like cut them to drain them to get rid of the blood, and it actually um, cures him. He's still a pretty sick guy, but he's not dying like everyone else. And so he knows, like, everyone's like, he thinks that like Stephen might be dead and stuff like that. And so he's like, um, he's not sure like what to do. So they see this dog that they basically, the dog was like drinking some of this person blood that was cut out from like his um his warts and wounds and boils and stuff like that and the dog is sick so what they do is they kill the dog cut it up and catapult it into the castle uh which is quite an interesting thing to do um but Stephen is there and he tells everyone tells martin and the others it's like look it's it's an affected because oh yeah because they find Stephen in there and they kind of they're going to torture him a little bit that they kind of chain him up but they keep they keep him alive they keep him alive and um 
yeah so he tells them it's like this this dog it's got carrying a plague and stuff like that <laughs> like bits of meat flying everywhere but he throws some of like this is this is piece that they, that they miss when they're throwing it all away and burning it and he throws it into the water well which agnes sees and so the next day they all start drinking from the well and she doesn't say anything um but um she stops marting drinking it and that's when it all becomes apparent that it's that this dog had the plague the meat had the plague uh and they've been drinking it and like some of the others are starting to, to show symptoms of the plague so they blame it on Martin because they wanted to leave. He's like, no, 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 it's fine. This is our castle. They're like, it's plague. It's like, no, it's fine. We got rid of everything. So they throw him in the well where, where this dog meat was. And um, basically the king comes back because the one that they hope hoping that um, Stephen is alive. And so they, they siege the castle. There's like some um, fighting. Martin manages to get on side with some of the soldiers and obviously they're fighting against everything but they're all losing basically everyone's getting like killed uh the king wins reign supreme and then stephen he um manages to rescue agnes and she becomes him becomes his again and uh, it's like uh they think uh martin's dead but right at the end uh, agnes sees him escape the castle where they thought he might have died and then that's the end of the end of the film she's a very interesting character because she's very she seems to love both men she seems to like the Stephen that was like a sweet guy that turns into like this marauding not bastard but he turns into this like stronger person it's like not as easy going as he was before and he's like fighting he's like you are mine I want you back and then there's Martin who has just basically raped her but then she she likes the, the 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 kind of the gang that he's in. We're not to start with, but she becomes part of it, and she's a very weird character, very weird character. And um, it's an odd film. It's not what I thought it would be. It's like uh, some, some great effects, some great fighting, some really interesting characters, and it's like a uh, not sword and sorcery, not sword and sandal. There's no sorcery in it. Like I said, it's set in the 16th century, and it's um. Yeah, it's a really well put together movie. Uh, yeah, it's not one that I kind of, I'd never seen it before. And it's like, I know Eureka had put the release out. Kind of took a while to get to watch it, but I thoroughly, thoroughly recommend this movie. Uh, I think it might have some US release or something, but in the UK, unlike the Region 2 one, it's like, yeah, I said, it's, um, it's Eureka that, that put this movie out. I believe they have free shipping worldwide and it's it's a good price. So I recommend that people pick this up, especially if you're a Paul Verhoeven fan. This very much has the his thumbprint on this. You can see where bits of like the brutality in Robocop, you can see the bits of brutality in this and you can see where he kind of takes that like it's, it's definitely one of his movies. <laughs> it's, it's a very, very, very fun movie. Anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the review. I'll catch you next week. Thank you. Bye-bye.